Hello there everyone. We are going to talk about the energy stored in a magnetic field. In the past, we have learned that capacitors, for example, can store the electric field energy and we can just tap into that energy whenever we need later on after we charge a capacitor with an electric charge. The same thing for an inductor, okay? An inductor, when a current passes through and it's fully completed all the coils of a solenoid and it's a constant current, you can actually, once you switch off that circuit, you can still take current out from the, con the inductor and use it for something else. Since you are actually using that energy after the battery which supplied the energy before is gone, then you save the energy and that's how an inductor stores energy. So let's see this circuit here. In this circuit we have an electromotive force and it's going to push a current through an inductor and as we know because of change in magnetic flux in each uh, loop or each coil part is going to affect this one, is going to do a back EMF and slow it down and this one is going to do the same. So it seems that as the current tries to go through the inductor, the battery or the electromotive force has to put work to get over the, the inductor. This work gets stored into the inductor once you switch or close the circuit. We need to find the amount of energy stored in that inductor and this energy is stored in the form of a magnetic field energy. Okay, so first of all, so we know that energy, and I am going to call it U, is equal to the average power times time. Now, I am going to just rewrite it again. So U is equal to P, known as average, P sub average, times T. So P average is equal to I times the back electromotive force and this is p average because the amount of current changing throughout the the circuit once the switch is closed so i'm going to call this i average and the current if i want to show you it changes from i equals to zero to a final value i and if i want to find the average value it would be, so I'm going to call it I average, it's going to be half the value of I, because if you add 0 plus I, or, or 0 plus I, this is here, the x-axis is time, okay, and you divide it by 2 to get the average, so this is the average. So P average now is equal to 1 half I times the back electromotive force. Now, the electromotive force here, as we defined it before, is equal to the inductance, the change in the current over the change in time. Delta I means the change in the current from I2 to I1. So I1 is um, just equal to zero at T equals zero, and T equals zero is the time we close the circuit here at the switch. Now, I2, I'm going to call it just I, because it's the only current we have, at T equals to T. I'm going to call this T1, T1 for I1. I'm going to call this T2 for I2. So, delta I becomes I2 minus I1, and I2 is I, and I1 is 0, so delta I turns into just I. The same for delta T, just T. So, E... It ends up to be equal to L I divided by T and now I have this equation here 1 or I'm gonna call this 2 and I have this one here I'm gonna call it 1 I'm gonna just put them together to find P average so I'm gonna go here P average is equal to I average times the electromotive force and all of this when I put them together is equal to one half times i times l times i divided by t so p average ends up with this expression let me just make it a little bit 
simpler. So it's one half i square l divided by t. So now if I want to find u, which is the energy, is equal to p average times t. p average is this number or this quantity and t times t so t with t goes away so you end up with one half i square l and that's the equation we are looking for so let's have an example a 10 millihenry inductor carries a 7.5 current what is the energy stored in this one so we can say u is equal to one half times the current square times l and we can just plug in the numbers one half times the current square which is here carries 7.5 current in amps okay so that would be 7.5 7.5 squared times l which is 10 millihenry times 10 to minus 3 all right so if we do this calculation together quickly and after doing the calculations, the answer would be 0.28125, and this is energy measured in joules. And that's it for this one. Thank you.